Fradiola. I'm the Mental Health Distinguished Educator at the Maine Department of Education and member of the Office of School and Student Support Coordinated School Health Team. I'm joined today by Susan Berry. I'll go next. <laughs> I'm the Health Education and Health Promotion Specialist of the Maine Department of Education. I also sit on the Office of School and Student Supports Coordinated School Health Team. Glad to be here. Pass it to Tammy. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, sorry, it's taking me a minute to share my screen. I'm Tammy Diaz. I'm a school nurse specialist with the Department of Education, and I'm excited to be here with all of you today. Today, we'll be focused on the first strategy from the CDC Mental Health Action Guide, Increasing Students' Mental Health Literature, or Literacy. Uh, to begin with, uh, it's the mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to our schools, educators, and leaders by providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. And then to provide a, a quick overview of today's session, we'll review the strategy of increasing student mental health literacy, participate in small group discussions focused on the strategy, engage in reporting out and sharing activities from the breakout room, and then review what's coming in our next webinar in the series. As a reminder, there's an understanding that schools will be different in different places regarding the implementation of the strategy, and that's okay. Uh, we respect the position of every school and are proud to provide this opportunity to learn and discuss ideas for growing your readiness to fully implement the strategy. As we begin, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and we'll respond to these question, questions either at the end of our webinar today or if we don't have time, which is quite possible, we'll respond to the questions when we mail out or email out the summaries from today's webinar. We've, if you haven't seen it, we've dropped the link to the CDC guide in the chat so that if, if people do not have that easily available, um, they can access it through the link. And Ken, I'm going to drop, drop it in again for people who came in after it was dropped in there. Perfect. And then we have a, a few um, group norms that we'd like to promote. Um, we value the experiences that each of you, your schools, and, you, and your communities bring to this webinar. This is a safe place to come together, discuss, and share experiences, ideas, and knowledge. This is meant to be an interactive and engaging experience. So we have a, a few norms. The first one is to assume positive intent. The second one is to share the air. And the third one is to contribute gems that can help the group learning. And then as a re general reminder, these norms will be uh, carried forth into our, our coming webinar sessions as well. So, what is mental health literacy? Mental health literacy includes learning and understanding what mental health is while also building help-seeking skills. Increasing student mental health literacy promotes mental health and well-being by helping students increase knowledge about mental health, reducing stigma around mental illness, teaching how to develop and maintain positive mental health, learn how to engage in and help seeking behavior and to identify specific mental health disorders and treatment. Susan, you're muted. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> so we're gonna to talk today about two approaches for increasing mental health literacy. They are delivering a classroom-based mental health education curricula program 
and using peer-led modeling programs. So to start off with, we'll talk about classroom-based mental health education curriculum programs. And I add the term programs there because programs are fit within the overall curriculum. And in this case, fits within the curriculum of health education or also within a school counselor curriculum program. The most common places that you'll find mental, mental health education curricula programs. The classroom-based programs are part of a comprehensive and quality health education curriculum and teach students about many elements and build skills, including what positive mental health is, what emotional distress and youth stress may look like, offers opportunities to talk about mental illness and the causes, why people don't always ask for help, the stigma, how to reduce it, and addresses the importance of talking to a trusted adult when feeling stressed or concerned for a friend, family member, themselves, or other person who may be struggling with um, mental health and, have, and how to do that, how to actually practice the skill of getting support and help. Again, these mental health education programs can be offered in school counselor time, lunchtime groups, advisory groups, before or after school, in addition to being part of the health education curriculum. To summarize the evidence of um, the impact of students on students when they actually participate in a mental health um, ed education program, what we notice is the knowledge, attitudes, stigma, and help-seeking behaviors. They decrease negative emotional responses towards people who have, who have mental illness. They improved the knowledge and attitudes towards people with mental illness. We, the outcomes showed more help-seeking behaviors and optimism for effective treatment, as well as more students being more likely to share personal information with school counselors as a result of participating in the curriculum materials. The action guide has examples of some programs and there are many more besides the three that are highlighted there, but we also wanted to highlight the, the NAMI, the National Association for Mental Illness program called Ending the Silence, Erica's Lighthouse, which focuses on depression and anxiety, but also addresses suicide prevention. So clearly a mental health program and Lifeline Suicide Awareness and Prevention Curriculum Lessons, which NAMI Maine and the Department of Education partner to um, support and deliver. And again, these are all evidence-based programs. Ken? The second part of the strategy is implementing peer-led modeling programs. Peer-led modeling programs teach adolescent peer leaders to model positive attitude, skills, and behavior to promote change. Teach peer leaders how to promote development of healthy coping strategies. And through interactive presentations, peer leaders emphasize the importance of identifying resources. And then peer leaders may also share the names of adults who they've engaged with when experiencing distress. The benefits of peer led modeling programs include increased coping attitudes, increased acceptability of help seeking behavior, increased positive perception of adult support. And an example of this would be the strengths, uh, the Sources of Strength, SOS program, which is a best practice youth mental health promotion and suicide prevention program. When we, when we examine our strategies to support student mental health and well-being, we also look at the focus and focus on equity. When we focus on equity, we consider ways to expand the availability of mental health sources services through partnerships with local, state, and regional organizations, as well as community-based groups. We consider parent, caregiver, and community perceptions of mental health and how these might affect students' ability and decisions to seek mental health support. So providing some general um, principles and specific suggestions for centering equity and increasing students' mental health literacy would include using data to understand students. The data source that we promote here in the state is a main integrated youth health survey, which is part of the YRBS at the national level. We adapt programs and practices in order to address the different backgrounds of our students, making sure we're recognizing and uh, including all students. 
administration needs to create consistent guidelines, practices, and policies to support mental health training for all school personnel. And I do mean all school personnel, everyone that interacts and works in the schools. What I've learned is that we cannot expect folks to know what they don't know. So we cannot expect people to be appropriately addressing mental health um, issues and uh, increasing mental health literacy if they don't know what that means and what that is. So this training is very important. Examples of trainings might include the mental health first aid or youth mental health first aid, both available through NAMI Maine, the assist program, and suicide prevention and awareness gatekeeper training. And we have multiple sources of that in our state available. Ken? Then a few implementation tips. Administrative level support is, a criti is critical for our success in this area, conveying to all school personnel the need for mental health programs, practices, and policies and it creates a consistent guideline and practice to support mental health training. The, another implementation tip would be to align to the main learning results for health education standards and the use of the CDC's PCAT tool to assist with curriculum development. A few additional tips to implementing strategy one may include providing ongoing training and coaching for staff and peer leaders and monitoring and evaluating the implementation and outcomes of mental health curricula programs. Okay, so now what we've just done is given you um, a oh, quick overview of the student mental health literacy section of the action guide, which is found for those who have copies of the guide on pages 16, 17, and 18. And what we'd like to do is transition into our breakout rooms and we have 10 breakout rooms set up with approximately seven people per breakout room in order to have a conversation uh, following these prompts that um, I'll go through in just a moment. But what we want you to do is have an open discussion, give everybody a chance to um, share and talk about what are you already doing? Because we know there are great stuff going on in the state of Maine. And by listening to what folks are doing, hopefully you'll pick up some new tips and, and ideas. So the prompts are, what is your school district offering for classroom-based mental health education curriculum programs? And where or when are they being offered? Where during the school day? Where in the school building? And when during the school day? What is your school district offering for peer-led programs? Again, talking about where and when. And how is your school or district ensuring all students are engaged in the classroom mental health education program, that it does bring in everyone? And, have, and how do, are they having the opportunities to engage? 